Uh, thank you, Dipreet. Uh, uh, thank you uh, for uh, for arranging all the logistics for uh, this uh, event to happen. So first, let me start my video. So, uh, am I visible to all? Uh, yes, yes, Gauraj, you are visible. Uh, okay, so uh, good evening to, uh, to one and all. So welcome to uh, uh, this lecture series, uh, um, and especially uh, in the session which is going to be taken by me. And basically, in this session, uh, we'll give you a brief idea about the applications of linear algebra, uh, more precisely in image processing. How are, uh, so the title says that application of linear algebra in image processing. How are I am going to talk about uh, some more applications as well, if uh, time permits me, uh, maybe at the end of uh, this particular session. Uh, so, I think, I think, very, uh, I think seven or eight uh, people have joined, so should we wait for some time or? Uh, yeah, you can two minutes, but it is okay. Okay. Yeah. So, so let us wait for a few minutes. Let's say two, three minutes for other persons to join, and then we will uh, start discussion discussion on the applications of linear algebra. So, in the meanwhile, let me share my screen so that uh, if you are able to see that, you can always uh, let me know. So is my uh, screen visible? Uh, yes, well, it's visible. Okay. So, Dimitri, I think uh, it's already 5.30, can we start or is? Uh, yes, yes, we can start. Uh, okay, so maybe the person who are missing, they will join in between. Uh, okay, so good evening all. So, let me, uh, let me start uh, this journey of the applications of linear algebra. Uh, so, um, I hope that you have enjoyed this whole uh, activity of PEW uh, because uh, I think this is going to be the last session for the uh, DW activity, and uh, then you are going to have uh, a very uh, a nice insight uh, of uh, the linear algebra where it can be 
uh, useful or uh, where, 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 and where, where we can use it for different kind of purposes. Uh, so in, in my presentation uh, and this uh, three or four presentation which I am going to have in these lectures, uh, I will try to give you an uh, overview how the linear algebra is going to uh, is going is going to help us in understanding the different real life phenomena as well as the different applications uh, where where we can we are going to use the linear algebra or even in our daily life uh, if we are going to uh, where we are going to have, we are going to use this linear algebra concepts or maybe even you can say that uh, in our elementary education which we have learned so far without uh, with, without uh, linear algebra how linear algebra can uh, is going to affect or enhance that the visualization of those things. Uh, so let, let me start uh, uh, this uh, session with a very simple question to all of you. What is linear algebra? And I, I, I hope that all of you are going to have a very uh, nice and clear answer of this particular uh, question. So anyone want to give me a very brief uh, answer to this question? What is the linear algebra? Anyone who want to speak, please uh, unmute yourself and uh, you can speak. And uh, whenever you are not speaking, you can uh, definitely go to unmute yourself. Oh, sorry, mute yourself. So, anyone want to uh, shed some light on uh, uh, this particular word, linear algebra, which we are going to have written on this particular uh, slide? So, anyone? Okay, so, so let me start discussion. I think uh, people are hesitant uh, to say something, but anyways, uh, so uh, if I look at this word linear algebra, then uh, suddenly there are two different words comes in my mind. And I say that linear algebra is nothing but uh, the combination of two words. One is called linear, other one is called algebra. So when I try to define this linear algebra uh, using these two words linear and algebra, then uh, definitely uh, the meaning is of this particular word linear algebra comes out when I know the meaning of linear and algebra. And these are the two most common terms which we are going to use uh, uh, throughout the mathematics. It uh, doesn't matter what you, but uh, in which uh, uh, program we are having. These two words we are frequently uh, used. Uh, even from our uh, elementary education, we use the word linear and we use the word algebra as well. So now let us try to understand uh, what is the meaning of these two words. So when you talk about algebra, so the meaning of algebra is uh, roughly the relationship. So uh, now you can understand that uh, when we talk about the relationship, then uh, in order to find out relation, we should uh, have more than one entity in our head. And when we talk about algebra, so basically we are looking at the relationship among the numbers. So now, well, like I will take a very simple example over here just to explain why I'm saying the algebra means uh, relationship. Let me take x plus y whole square is equal to x square plus y square plus 2xy. I, everyone knows this is a very beautiful identity which we are using from our childhood. Uh, and uh, But whenever we try to prove this kind of identity, we never talk about the numbers. Of course, this x and y are going to be numbers and then this uh, entity or this identity is going to be proved. And uh, But whenever we try to prove it, we are just going to prove this identity uh, without the numbers. And that is the beauty of algebra. There you want to find out the relationship between the two things or two numbers, even without knowing those numbers. And that is why uh, when, I, when I said that the algebra, whenever we talk about algebra, algebra means the relationship. Uh, so it's it's going it's going to be very uh, very simple uh, uh, simple simple definition or the simplest definition of algebra where you you just want to exploit the relationship and relationship can be is going to be of any kind it's going to be linear it's going to be nonlinear. Now this word linear comes uh, when we talk about the linear then uh, the meaning of linear is uh, roughly you can say the line like basically we are looking for the analysis of the straight lines. Because uh, when uh, if you go to your elementary education, the linear word which you are going to use first time that is with respect to the lines. So linear means we are just looking for the line-like structures which we are going to have across us or around us. And when you try to combine these two things, linear and algebra, algebra says I am trying to exploit the relationship. Linear says I am just trying to find out the lines or the line structure. 
then when you combine that then the linear L algebra roughly says that i just want to exploit or find the line like relationship among the different entities so now when you try to when you talk about a line like relationship the first extension from algebra which you come uh, which you come to know is that like now numbers are not going to work for me now i need i need to think beyond the numbers and whenever you try to think beyond the numbers you are looking at the collection of numbers now when i try to find out the collection of numbers then there are different modalities for doing uh, doing so someone says i will form a set someone say okay i i don't want to form a set i just want to exploit a particular relationship between those numbers which are needed but in any case whenever i try to uh, take the uh, the collection of numbers the easiest and the simplest extension of a number is going to be called the vectors let's say x y or maybe x y z and so so whenever you talk about linear algebra you are you are just thinking of going away from numbers in the sense of you are now going to take a collection of numbers in the form of vector and that is why whenever you talk about linear algebra the first and the basic things comes in your it comes uh, in your mind is vector spaces so now i think this is going to be very uh, long story how this uh, uh, algebra and linear uh, bring together a new flavor of vectors where you are going to just play with the vector you can add vector you can multiply vector with some scalar and then how and try to see what are the different effects uh, of that particular uh, particular vector on those particular operations now uh, if if you are not satisfied even satisfied with this particular concept called vectors then what will happen then you are saying that in order to come from number to vectors i have taken the collection of numbers and when you want to go beyond the vectors then you can say i now i want to take the collection of vectors and whenever you try to take the collection of vectors what you are going to get so it's all about how you are going to arrange those those uh, vectors either in a row manner in a horizontal manner or in a vertical manner or the column manner you are going to get another extension which is called the matrices where you are going to have a vector v1 as a first column then v2 and so on to vn so now this is a very very simple extension where whatever the basic information you know from your elementary education that's number in mathematics you are just going to exploit or extend towards the vectors and then matrices and then whenever uh, whenever you say okay now i just want to take the collection of matrices then you are going to have the tensors into the picture so the next stage in this particular uh, particular uh, extension is going to be the tensors where you are going to have the collection of matrices of same size or the uh, or the dissimilar size whatever it may be it may be uh, it may be homogeneous it may be heterogeneous so when we talk about the linear algebra it's all about vectors matrices and beyond so how are in our in, in our education system we always uh, go till matrices and rest of the things are for the research purposes so whenever you go for the higher uh, higher education like uh, the doctorate or maybe beyond uh, towards the research side then uh, you have to extend the concept of matrices for the concept of tensors so that you are even going to exploit the different properties of the high dimensional space because if you if you if you closely look at in this particular extension as soon as you are taking a collection of the basic things you are trying to increase the dimension you are working in and when you talk about tensor the meaning is the dimension is beyond 3 and most of the times you are going to have a, a n dimension n dimensional space or i which you can use for the different purposes so the, so when you try trying to talk, uh, talk about the applications of linear algebra then you have to find where i am going to use these vectors in the real life applications or different uh, applications where i want to use these matrices or where i want to use these tensors so now the uses of these entities will lead to the application of linear algebra so uh, so the general statement which i want to give uh, at the end uh, that the application of linear algebra generally focuses on the implications of matrices determinants and vectors uh, again i am not including the tensor word over here because uh, 
if you want to utilize this tensor, then it is very hard to visualize because the dimension is generally is going to be very high. However, there you can also utilize these tensors uh, into the picture uh, or into this particular statement. So now I have used the word determinant over here, which is actually uh, obtained from the matrices. Uh, so, uh, so, the, uh, so this matrices and determinant you can say is going to be a single unit. But I want to emphasize uh, this determinant because uh, in most of the phenomena where uh, where I am looking for a single value, uh, then matrices is not going to give me that single value, and then immediate extension or the property of matrix which will give me a single value to utilize is nothing but the determinant. Of course, a uh, determinant is going to have their own uh, restriction, like uh, it is going to happen only for uh, square matrices and so and so forth. So, again, I'm not going into the te uh, technicalities right now, but as the, as the this lecture will go on, we will uh, try to discuss all those things as well. Uh, so, but in general, if you talk about the applications of linear algebra, I'm basically talking about the vectors matrices and a similar kind of structure uh, such as tensors. Okay, so now let us talk about quickly talk about the connections of linear algebra in our daily life, or maybe uh, whatever elementary education we are having, or our uh, country is uh, giving. So in the linear, you can find the uh, diverse application of linear algebra. In fact, I can uh, say that linear algebra is everywhere. So uh, the simplest example, which uh, from the geometry uh, of the class ninth student, which can uh, relate, is called the cent finding the center. Now that even the finding a centroid, uh, we can use the concept of matrices in the form of determinant. In fact, the area, like the, like the area of a square, area of a triangle, area of a, you can say of any shape or of any general shape. Again, now we can utilize uh, the matrix theory or the linear algebra into it to get the uh, to get the area as well to give a new visualization or representation of these things. Even we can uh, we can use this finance. Uh, in the finance as well. Now, when I say finance, so I'm not going to the uh, financial mathematics at all because this is going to be the high level altogether, uh, high level uh, concept. I'm just talking about the interest, the compound interest, the normal interest, all those things. So we even we, in those cases we can use uh, the linear algebra. Then uh, of course the in the geometry, uh, though I have taken the two uh, very, very basic concept from the geometry uh, separately, but apart from these two, there are a uh, few more examples or uh, the situations where the matrix theory plays a very critical uh, role, uh, role uh, for that particular uh, problem. Now, the last uh, last thing which uh, I want to take in this particular list is nothing but the solving simultaneous equations. And I know that everybody is aware of uh, how to solve the simultaneous equations. So it's uh, like uh, when, when you look at uh, uh, the, uh, the competitive examination, they are going to have different kind of questions for the kids like the, the two bagels and the two toffees are going to be 25 then uh, and the, the price of uh, one uh, one bagel and two toffees is going to be 16 then what is the individual price of these things so these are the very very elementary questions which are actually meant for the small school kids to understand uh, how you are going to use mathematics in your daily life uh, to uh, to achieve certain assumptions or such, uh, certain uh, observations so now let, let, let me let me devote a few uh, few slides on these five topics which I have mentioned over here, and then we'll, we will directly jump to uh, the high level applications of linear algebra. So now centroid uh, again I, as I mentioned that you have to find out the uh, center of gravity of any function that is called centroid in the mathematics. So if I look at this particular uh, uh, if I consider this particular object or the shape, and I just want to uh, want to find out the centroid of this, then I know that I am going to in the geometry I am going to have some formulation uh, for this particular uh, uh, finding of this particular uh, centroid of this particular shape. Uh, however, if I want to utilize uh, the linear algebra, how the things is going to be done? So now I will assume that this point is going to be the origin for me, and then. Uh, you, assuming this is the origin and the corners of this particular shape, I can always define a vector. So it's not nothing but a vector 6, 0, this is nothing but a vector 6, 4. So basically what I'm trying to do is I'm just taking the corner and I'm just assuming one corner as the uh, as my origin. You can take any corner, it's up to you. Uh, because uh, uh, in this case, when we talk about this area, then the thing that is going to be the positive quantities most of the times. So it is not going to make a much difference. So, but again, the lower part is going to, if you take a lower uh, 
uh, corner as a, as the horizon, then things will come to be in the positive direction. So it's uh, everything is going to be fine. So now you can always find out this particular uh, uh, vectors over here, which is uh, nothing but the corners of a shape, and then immediately you can take the average of these vectors to get the centroid. So this is again going to be very simplest. Uh, simplest way to find the center of a particular shape. Again, uh, you can verify uh, the center of this particular shape uh, if, if you want to uh, utilize a very uh, the basic geometric formula which you have. Uh, so that is may, that may be uh, that uh, I may leave as a small homework for you for this particular activity. So now uh, this is for the center. Then uh, let us try to extend a little bit further. Then let us talk about the area. So now, how to find out the area of this? So if I assume that uh, since all these boxes are square, so let me say this is going to be a unity square, then I will just count all the squares, sum it up, and I will get the solution. So this is going to be uh, the simplest uh, way to uh, solve it. And I am going to have a 36, uh, not meter square, is going to be the unit square, because I don't know what is the unit. So it is going to be the unit square. So whatever the size of a single element over here, that will give you the basic idea. Now, if I want to solve this uh, problem using the linear algebra, then again I have to take help of vectors. So again, uh, as we did, as we uh, did in the in the centroid, just try to take one point as your reason. Try to find out uh, uh, try to find out the vector of, vector representation of the, uh, that particular shape, and then try to find out the area. Then how to find out? You can look at in this particular shape. I am going to get a triangle. This triangle. This triangle. This is again a triangle, this is again a triangle, and this is again a triangle. So the idea behind is, I just want to find out the area of this triangle, uh, if this, this particular triangle, all the triangles, and then sum it up to get the final solution. So now, the, I, I, I hope that uh, all of you are aware uh, from the vector calculus, and then uh, using the vector calculus, you can immediately identify what is the area of a triangle. So let, uh, let me give you a very uh, brief uh, idea about it. Let, let's say I'm going to have vector x. Uh, and then I'm going to have a vector y with me, and I'm just looking for the area of this particular triangle. Then what I will do, I will take, take another vector which is parallel to this. Again, take the parallel to this. And then using this particular uh, parallelogram law, I can always find out the area. So the, the area of this parallelogram is, uh, is say A, then the area of triangle. The area of triangle is nothing but 1 by 2 of the area of parallelogram. And the area of parallelogram is can be easily identified by the cross multiplication of these vectors. Uh, so again, uh, when, when you try to extend this, this particular concept over here, then you are going to get the area of this shape even with this particular simple formula. And then uh, then you are going to then you are going to get the same solution which you are going to get from the previous solution, uh, previous case. So even in, in finding out the areas of certain shapes, the linear algebra is going to give you a very nice overview to get the uh, solution. So this is another going to be a very simple example uh, in which you are just about to find out the area of a uh, triangle. Uh, so the area of uh, a particular shape using the linear algebra. So now uh, let us take a very simple example from the finance as well. As I mentioned that I am not going in the higher uh, terms in the financial engineering at all. Uh, so let us take a very simple example of compound interest. So how this uh, so, uh, how uh, the linear algebra come, uh, comes into the picture over here. Let's say I'm going to have the three different saving schemes with different interest rate, uh, which is going to be compounded annually. Let's say these are going to be the three different uh, rates for that particular schemes which I'm having. Then uh, I can immediately identify uh, the total uh, the compound, uh, or you can say the amount after the compound interest using this particular formula. Let me give you a very brief uh, discussion or the gist of this particular uh, formula. So if you look, if you recall the definition of the compound interest is going to be A is equal to P multiplied 1 by R over M whole power T, where T is nothing but the time, M is nothing but the whether the in, uh, interest is going to be compounded one time, two time, three time in a year. So it is the it is nothing but uh, the number of times you are going to get the interest. This is going to be the rate, this is going to be the principal amount, this is going to be the uh, compounded amount which you are going to get after this particular time t. So now for my simplification, I will say that uh, the time is going to be one, I am just going to take the one year. And I will say that uh, uh, 
uh, the, the interest is going to be compounded uh, once only throughout the year. So M is again going to be one. So in this case, whenever I take these two assumptions, then uh, this formula will lead to the A is equal to P one plus R to the power uh, R to the power T. So now uh, if you look at this first row and the, and the first row of this, then what I'm trying to do over here is I'm just trying to compile uh, the amount which I'm going to get with respect to the first scheme in the first row, second scheme in the second row, and the third scheme in the third row. So this is again going to be going to have uh, an arrangement where uh, I, I am going to utilize the concepts of matrix or the linear algebra uh, for the finance uh, in the finance sector, especially in the compound interest. So it may also be possible that the linear algebra is not directly involved uh, or including a certain application. However, you can take certain assumptions so that the linear algebra concepts are going to be applicable in those scenarios. Uh, so this is one of the, uh, this is going to be one of that, that kind of scenario where you can mold everything yourself uh, or towards the applicability of the linear algebra. So uh, this is a very simplest example. Now you can uh, you can even take the example of a simple interest or maybe some typical uh, compound interest problem as well where uh, these assumptions are not going to be there. Still, you are going to have uh, the, the, the applicability of the linear algebra in those cases as well. But for the simplicity, I'm just taking a very simple example uh, in, in my slides. Now the geometry. So in the geometry, we have we have seen that two example of centroid as well as uh, uh, the area. But there is uh, there is far uh, far more uh, applications which we can observe in the geometry. The two of the two, two of other application which I want to just say that uh, mention over here is the reflection or the rotation, the reflection around x axis and y axis. So that this reflection kind of thing, uh, this reflection operation. Or the process can be modeled in form of a matrix. So if you look at if you if you if you look at uh, if you look at the reflection uh, around or along this about the y-axis. So now I know that uh, when you when you migrate from this quadrant to this quadrant, the value of y doesn't going to be changed. There is going to be change in the x value, y x value only. So here I am going to have the positive values. And in this case, I'm going to have the negative value. So the representation of x, y after the reflection is going to be minus x minus y. So when you try to model this kind of, this kind of uh, reflection in a two-dimensional space, then of course, uh, this two, uh, two y matrix comes into the picture where we are going to have the minus one uh, as a coefficient over here and the positive one coefficient over here. So that by every uh, vector which is present in the first dimension, first, uh, first, uh, sorry, first quadrant, now is going to be in the uh, second quadrant, and it is nothing but uh, uh, the one uh, will give you the reflection about y axis. Similarly, if you want to take the reflection about uh, uh, x axis, then again I'm looking for the reflection of this point, this particular point in this particular quadrant, which is going to be somewhere over here. And I know that in this particular quadrant and this quadrant, uh, the value of x won't change, the value of y is going to be changed. So it basically, this is going to be x minus y and then immediately I can say the matrix is going to be this which is going to be me uh, uh, the final way sorry there is a mistake over here this is going to be plus one this is going to be minus y so this particular matrix is going to be a matrix which is responsible for the reflection uh, reflection of these vectors over here so this reflection rotation scaling shearing or uh, what, you, what you can say the affine transformation these are all nothing but the pure applications of uh, the linear algebra. And when you come into the linear algebra uh, point of view, the things are going to be much simpler because you just need to multiply a matrix with a vector to get the new vector. Otherwise, then you have to do all the analysis and all the formulation, basic formulation you have to utilize. So basically, this is nothing but uh, uh, if I'm going to have a, space, a shape over here, then using the same matrix, I'm going to have uh, the reflection of that particular shape. Uh, about the x-axis or the y-axis, whatever it to be. In the similar manner, now uh, everyone knows uh, about the rotation. Uh, it's going to be a very simple matrix over here, like this is going to be the matrix, uh, the rotation uh, the rotation matrix uh, usually called. Then uh, you can plug in the different values of theta, and then you are going to have a different kind of outputs over here. 
Uh, so now everyone knows that there is a very this matrix is going to be very special matrix. Uh, so special in the sense this is going to be orthogonal. And the determinant of this matrix is going to be plus minus. So these are going to this this rotation matrix is going to be very special matrix in the sense that it's going to be uh, the orthogonal and the value is going to be plus minus one regardless of the values of theta. But this as soon as you are going to have the different values of this theta, you are going to have different rotation uh, in this particular plane. So now this uh, if I take this as my basic uh, uh, basic structure s over here, and then if I take a theta is equal to pi by four. Then or 45 degree, then uh, this shape is going to be uh, rotated, and uh, you are going to get a new shape as star, where the structure is going to be the same. However, the position is going to be uh, radially distorted. Uh, so this is this is uh, uh, this is all about uh, the rotation. So even in the basic geometry concepts which we have learned, uh, we can uh, try to uh, try to utilize uh, the matrix concept of this layer, and it is going to give you a very nice. And comfortable way of doing things. Now, this is uh, again, I'm taking a very simplest example now because uh, linear algebra is all about the solving the simultaneous equations. Uh, you can take uh, you can take any method, uh, whether it is a direct method to solve the system A is equal to B, or it may be the indirect method or the iterative method. Uh, every time you are going to have uh, utilize uh, the matrices. The simplest example is you have to represent your system in the matrix form where you are going to have this matrix A, then this is going to be the vector of unknown, and this is going to be the uh, vector of uh, the right hand side of these equations. Then you are going to have X is equal to B, then you will find out the augmented matrix, you will apply uh, the Gaussian elimination method, the Jacobi method, Gaussian method. So the different methods are going to be there, but all these methods are actually exploit. The properties of matrices to get to a final answer. So let me take a very simple example. When you try to find out the augmented matrix, then uh, using the pivoting, you just try try to make these elements as zero and these elements as zero. Basically, you just try to convert this into the upper triangular matrix over it so that uh, all the elements below the leading diagonal is going to be zero. And then using the backtracking, you are going to find out your solution. So, uh, so this is going to be uh, the way by which uh, we are going to uh, use the linear algebra uh, to solve the different simultaneous equations. So, why I am taking this example over here is because when you talk about the real phenomena or the different applications in in different engineering uh, disciplines, so this is the this is the technique or the process which is widely occurring over there. And the linear algebra is going to find its application there in that particular discipline because of this, the solution of the simultaneous equation. So, in the, uh, uh, maybe uh, uh, in the in the in the classes to come, we are going to have certain examples uh, of the engineering discipline as well, where the simultaneous equations are going to uh, play a very vital role, uh, vital a vital role of. Uh, uh, but quite a lot of solving things in a much easier way for them. So this is our, these are the very simple examples uh, of the applications of linear algebra. So I think uh, even if you don't have the enough knowledge of linear algebra, you you will be able to solve all this problem easily uh, using the geometry or uh, you can say the basic uh, mathematical understanding of the topic. Now let us try to try to talk about the different uh, connections in the in the diverse area. So the first uh, application which I will take uh, in this uh, set of lectures is going to be the image processing, which is going to be the straightforward the next application I am going to take. Uh, then uh, we will take we will see uh, the application of linear algebra in chemistry. Then the traffic flow. Basically, now I am talking about the meaning of traffic flow is uh, how. Uh, how the city ma management is going to uh, go going to find the application of linear algebra in devising uh, the flow of the traffic uh, on the roads. Then we are looking at the from one application from the electrical engineering, basic the electrical circuits. Then graph theory. Then we will look for the security. And uh, if the time permits, at the end we will look at uh, the few applications of linear algebra in the machine learning and deep learning. Uh, okay, so. Uh, 
this, this is again going to be, it is not going to be a very small list. It's going to be an unending, unending story uh, for the linear uh, algebra conditions in the diverse domain and in the real life. Uh, so, anyhow, if anyone want to ask uh, anything, you may please uh, uh, ask uh, in between. Uh, you can ask, uh, you can stop me in between and you can ask. There is no issue. With it. And uh, Dilpit, if there are a few questions in the chat box, you can uh, also uh, put those questions so that I can uh, clarify those. Okay, sure. Yeah. Uh, okay, so these are the different applications which we uh, I am intending to cover uh, throughout this particular lecture series. So now the first application which I am going to take is image processing. I heard that you already have one uh, uh, one lecture on the applications uh, of linear algebra in image processing. But uh, I then, but I, I'm a, I'm going to give you a mathematical flavor to uh, in order to uh, exploit this particular relationship of uh, linear algebra and the image processing. Uh, let us try to have uh, that uh, this particular journey of the image processing. So I am not including those stuff which you already covered in the previous lecture. Uh, so I am going to I am trying to give you uh, the distinct uh, uh, concepts which you have not done in this in that previous lecture. Okay, so in uh, just to just to start with the linear in the relationship of linear algebra and uh, image processing, let me uh, start with a very short mathematical story, which I hope you will like. So it's all about the Bunty and Bubbly. I think all of you are aware of Bunty and Bubbly. There is a very uh, famous movie, uh, Bunty and Bubbly, uh, starring uh, I think uh, Vishen Panchak and Nandi Mukherjee. So let us talk about that particular Bunty and Bubbly. So assume that Bunty and Bubbly robs a bank. And then they have a Mercedes bench with them and they escape escapes in the Mercedes bench. Now, uh, since it's a, it's a robbery, a case of the robbery, then police comes into the picture and then the whole case is pursued by the police. Then after the persuasion by the police, we are going to have the two news. One is the good news, one is the bad news. The good news says that police took the photograph of, of this particular vital in which the Bunty and Bubbly are actually escaping. So they have the photograph of the number plate of this car. So now my, uh, my assumption over here is this car belongs to those two people only. So that if we, if we trace, uh, if, if we use that number plate and try, try to trace the owner of this car, I'm assuming that we essentially go, uh, going to get the Bunty and Bunty. Now the bad news is whatever photo they have taken, that is blurred. Now what is the way? So now what police did is they have taken, so that, let me give you a very, glim, a very small glimpse of that photo. So let's say that photograph is something like this where uh, nothing is visible on the number plate. So there is nothing is visible over here. So now uh, what police did is police search for a mathematician. They take this photograph to the mathematician and now uh, and then they uh, they ask the high or they seek help from, uh, from a mathematician that they, if mathematician can do in this, uh, in, a, in order to uh, extract the information on the number of a particular uh, particular uh, car. So now what mathematician did is he will take that original image. So this is the image taken by the place which is blurred in nature. So now I am saying that this image is nothing but a two-dimensional function. So within a moment we will see why I am saying image is going to be a two-dimensional function. Uh, so we will see uh, that a very, a very simple and elegant proof of uh, this phenomena of why image is always going to be a matrix. So uh, we will see that uh, within a moment. But uh, what mathematician did is he has taken that particular image, assume that is going to be a two dimension function. It is going to be, and he's taken in another image, very, which is going to be uh, going to be very small image and uh, termed it as g of x, y. He converts these two particular images to get an enhanced image h of x, y. And using this enhanced image h of x, y, is able to extract the information of that particular bike. Now, over here, this is the original image. This is going to be the enhanced image. Now, what is this particular matrix? So, this particular matrix is called the filter in the image processing point of view. Filter is nothing but a collection of some numbers which comes from a distribution. So, now I have taken this picture over here. So, now what you will do is, if you know that there is a blur into the image, you will try to identify what is the distribution of that particular blur. So now, uh, instead of linear algebra, now I'm getting into the problem instead. 
where you are going to have a different distribution, probability probabilistic distributions. So when you talk about the image processing, it's all about the linear algebra and probability and statistics. So now I will I will uh, I will try to find out or I will I will try to estimate the distribution of the blur which is actually present in the original image. And using this distribution, I will construct a matrix which is called the filter such that when I apply this particular filter on the original image, whatever NX image I am going to get, that is going to uh, have uh, the desired output. So uh, linear algebra gives the formula for a blurry. Of course, I'm, when I say the linear algebra, I'm basically mentioned about this particular matrix. However, the formula is basically derived from the distribution which we are going to receive uh, from the estimation theory uh, of the probability and statistics. So let's say this, this particular uh, distribution is available, then of course I can construct this particular matrix, tiny matrix with me, then I will just try to take the uh, convolution of these two, uh, these two things. Since this is also a matrix, this is also a matrix, so it is nothing but the moving multiplication of a smaller image into the bigger image or bigger matrix. So then by inverting that particular formula, we can always get rid of the blur and then we are going to have the immense information. So now uh, this is a very uh, visual kind of visual uh, thing uh, which I am going to have over here. So now this is going to be the original image. So now you can see over here, nothing is vis actually visible over here. And when you try to uh, find out the appropriate distribution and try to construct, construct a relevant matrix or filter, and when you convert the result, uh, the output is something like this, which is responsible for unblurring the image. And then after doing this unblurring, I am able to identify what is the number of the microchurchian PI KP606. So now this is going to be the image where the no blur is going to be there. So of course, uh, in this case, since, uh, since the scenario is such that uh, the police is not able to take a very nice and clean photograph even a mathematics even the mathematical concepts can uh, can can do the better uh, enhancement of that particular image uh, so that uh, out of that particular blurred image i am going to have some meaningful information so when you talk about image processing except few concepts everything is about the linear algebra when i say linear algebra specifically i am talking about the matrix so let, let me give a very brief uh, uh, summarization how the image processing is going to be related with the linear algebra. Then we will try to understand why image is going to be matrix and how this two-dimension function comes into the picture. So now let us uh, let us take the image processing as a topic. Then when you when you deal with the image processing, you are going to have a different kind of scenarios over here. So the first scenario is how to represent an image. So now when you when you talk about the digital image processing, then the sensors will come and then the cameras will come and then they are going to have a different kind of uh, different kind of technical terms over there, uh, which will give you an image, digital image, which is in the form of a matrix. So we will again come back to that. So what is the image representation? So in image representation, when uh, I talk about the image, and then I talk about the pixel relationship, the distance between the two images, or maybe the two component of the images. Then what are the different operations? Like, can I add two images? Can I subtract two images? Can I multiply two images? Can I divide two images? Can I take the modulus of two images? Something like that. And uh, can can we take the uh, averaging? Can we find out the median? Can we can we take the kurtosis? Can we find out uh, the different uh, uh, elementary uh, statistical properties out of that particular image. So all these guys, I think, come under the category of the image representation. The next thing is the image transformation. So now I know that nowadays uh, this uh, soft uh, smartphone market uh, is very uh, is very cheap. Now you are going to get uh, the very good specific specification smartphone uh, in a very less amount uh, in a very very less amount, and then. Uh, everyone nowadays, everyone uh, is going to have a smartphone, and then a smartphone, a smartphone can be used for taking the pictures or taking the selfies. So these pictures and selfies are nothing but going to be the images. And uh, it may be possible that uh, while taking your selfie, the image is going to be a little bit tilted. And then you like uh, the if I want to take the uh, the image of this particular object, 
and in the image the object is something like this so it's going to be a rotated object in my image so i want to take image like this but i have taken the image like this so where the actual object is going to be little bit tilted then what you will do then the easiest way out for me is i can go for the photoshop or any other uh, uh, photo software where i just try to rotate this particular image so that uh, so that i am going to have the same uh, shape which i am or in the form as i desire so this is called the rotation of the image. Similarly, the size is very small, uh, which you have taken uh, from a camera and you want to enlarge it, you can enlarge it. Or if you, the size is very large, if you have taken a very good quality of uh, camera with you, then the size is going to be very large. And if you want to display it on the computer screen, then you may uh, you may want to reduce the size. Then this resizing comes into the picture and you want to just scale in and scale up uh, your image and then you can rotate image. Even you can rotate, uh, or you can crop the image. Let's say there are going to be two objects, and this object you doesn't want in your image. So you can always crop your image so that the interested or intended object are only present in the image. So these are called the different kind of image transformation which are good. So I'm not uh, taking a complete list. Even the sharing, wrapping, uh, and other uh, other transformation will also come in the picture. So these are the most commonly used. Uh, uh, transformation which we have. Then we are going to have the image enhancement. And one example we have seen in the previous example of this continuously. So now we are going to have the filtering, smoothing, sharpening, and there we are going to have different ways to doing it. So when you try to reflect the all these operations which I have listed in this particular table, then uh, we are just looking at what is the mathematical interpretation of these things. And when you try to find out the mathematical interpretation of all these themes, then the way out is going to be the linear algebra. So when you try to represent an image, you are talking about the introduction to the matrix. So when every image is going to be represented by a matrix, and all these relationship, distances, operations, averaging are nothing but the different matrix operation which you are aware of in the linear algebra. When we talk about the image transformation, it is again going to be the matrix transformation. It may be enlarged, enlargement, deduction, translation, row column deletion. So all these particular operations or transformation which you, all, you might have in uh, linear algebra will lead to the image transformations as well. Similarly, when you talk about the enhancement, when you talk about enhancement, it's all about the convolution or the multiplication of the original image with the different matrices. Of course, these matrices, there is going to be another way to find out these matrices because you cannot just multiply your matrix with a random matrix and you are going to say that, okay, my image is going to be enhanced. Uh, if, if the due diligence is not followed, then uh, you may even get a worse result than the original image. So these matrices has to be obtained after a careful analysis where the probability and statistics will play a major role uh, and this is going to be the, basically the estimation theory will tell you what is the nature of this particular matrix and depending on the estimated values or parameters you can immediately identify these matrices. So this is the very uh, coherence, a very simple coherence between the image processing and linear algebra. So whatever you want to do in linear algebra, apart from few things, everything comes from the linear algebra point. So if you are very good in linear algebra, specifically the matrix theory, you can do wonders in the image process. So now let me let me start uh, the discussion why an image is always going to be a matrix. So now uh, in order to understand this phenomena, why an image is always going to be a matrix, we need to understand one thing, that image is nothing but a function. Because when, when uh, the orientation of a mathematician and the orientation of an engineer is going to be different, a far different. Because an engineer is someone who takes the existing, uh, existing concepts and apply it. They, they don't look at what is going inside that particular concept. They just try to find the similarity of a concept and their real world problem and then they try to apply it. So it's a hidden trial kind of method which they are actually. 
But when you try to look at things from the mathematical point of view, then you are looking for the logical reasoning behind the behind, behind a particular thing. If I'm saying, why I'm saying all these? Because if I say that image is going to be a matrix, then I should have a clear cut proof of it. So let us try to have that particular uh, uh, discussion over here, where I'm trying to say that image is going to be a function. So Mathematically, when we talk about the mathematically, then mathematically an image is going to be a two-dimensional function. Let's say this is going to be the two-dimensional function where the domain is going to be the Cartesian product of two sets X and Y. And after, after taking these, the, any value from this particular set or this particular domain, it is mapped to a value from this particular interval 0 to n. So whenever you have this kind of function, then you are going to uh, have f as a image function or that is called the images where now let me say give what is the value of this l so uh, where l is going to be 2 to the power is small l minus 1 so this l is a very uh, is going to have a significance in this particular definition which is going to get uh, with, for by which we are going to define the nature of that particular image so this l is called the bits per pixel bits required for representing the image. So if I'm saying that in order to represent that image or a particular image, I'm looking for only four bits. Then this small l is, is going to be four and this capital L is going to be two to the power four minus one and it is going to be 15. So the meaning is whatever representation I'm looking at for a particular image, it certainly uses only the 15 symbols or the 15 values are going to be there. So this particular uh, this particular value of L, which is nothing but the bit uh, representation or required for representing the A, will create this particular interval for the range. And this is called the dynamic range of a particular image. So this is called the dynamic range. For that particular image, so this is nothing but the range for this particular function. When, but when you talk about uh, the image processing, it is going to be the dynamic range of that particular uh, image. Uh, so this particular L is going to define uh, the nature of the image, and that is called the bit image. So whenever I take the four bits, that image is called the four bit image. When I take L is equal to A, then it is called the 8 bit image. So the meaning is there are going to be required 8 bits to get the final uh, image. And whenever you have only one implication of L, these images are called the grayscale images. Here, this 0 stands for the black color and this capital L stands for the white color. So basically, whatever dynamic range is going to be there, which, you are going, which is nothing but this particular interval, is essentially give you the shades in your image uh, or in the photograph which you are going to have. Black is always going to, uh, zero is always going to be black color and this particular L is always going to be uh, the white color which you are going to have. So this, if this classification of L or different values which you are going to take for this L will define what kind of image you are going to have. For example, if I uh, quickly take uh, L as 1, then uh, I'm going to have L is equal to uh, 1 only. So the meaning is I am going to have a uniform image. I don't have variations at all in my image. I'm going to have a single digit and that is going to be either 0 or 1. If it is 0, then I'm going to have a black image. If it is going to be 1, then I'm going to have a white image. So, so uh, depending on the application, you can always find out the value of L uh, and then depending on this value of L, you are going to get the different kind of images for the uh, person. So now let us uh, let us uh, let us take a very simple example how this particular kind of function will lead to a matrix. So let me take a very simple example. So now, as I mentioned that uh, this function again, if you look at this, is going to be a two set. So one element come from this set, one element come from this set. So basically, I'm looking for the Cartesian product of these two sets. So I'm going to have a double kind of thing over here. So now I am working with a uh, working with the two independent directions. So this is going to be a two-dimensional function. So if I'm saying that image is always going to be a two-dimension function, 
then the meaning is if I'm going to have a two dimension function in mathematics, that should also lead to an image. To an image. So let me take a very simple example of x plus y. So now the question comes is construct an image of size 2 by 2 using the two dimension function x plus y. So now we will try to see how this 2 by 2 image is going to be uh, lead to a matrix. So of course the definition of x is given to me, but now in order to get uh, the final output like values from 0 to L, what I am looking at, I am looking at my set x and my set y. So now let me take my set x is going to have only two elements 0 and 1. y is again going to have two elements 0 and 1. So both the sets are going to be same x and y. So whenever you try to have the linear, uh, the Cartesian product of this x and y, so can anyone tell me what are the elements over here? So it is nothing but the combination of all these elements. So this zero will go with either this zero or this one. So it is going to be element 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, and 1, 1. So the meaning is if I'm trying to construct a 2 by 2 matrix or 2 by 2 image using this particular two dimension function, then this is going to be my domain. So I will pick any element of it plug in over here and I'm going to get some value. So let me try to do that exercise very easily. So F00 is going to be, so in this case, this F00 is going to be zero because it's nothing but X plus Y. Similarly, if I take F01 is going to be uh, one, F10 uh, is again going to be one and F11 is going to be so I am going to have the four elements in my domain and with respect to these four elements, I am going to get this particular value and hence the dynamic range for the image to be uh, considered is going to be the interval 0 to 2. As some book says that instead of taking this set or the interval, you can always take a set. So some books say that instead of taking this, you just take the set after the collection of but now this is an issue because the repetition is generally not allowed in sets. So now it may be possible that you are going to have repetition. So just to avoid all those things, I will say these values comes from this particular range and then uh, and hence the interval comes into the picture. So that, that this repetition can be taken care of. So now what is happening? Now you are going to have the two independent direction. So let me say this is going to be the independent direction x. This is going to be my independent direction y. What are the possible values of x? I am going to have the 1, uh, sorry, 0, 1. What are the possible values of y? Again, this is going to be 0 to 1. Now, when I take that linear, uh, when I take this particular element 0, 0, I am going to get a value 0. When I take 0, 1, I am going to take, uh, or let me take this my x and this my y for the simplicity. So, 0, 1, whenever I take 0, 1, this is going to be 1, this is going to be 1, and this is going to be Two. So this is nothing but the grid for the function values for function values. So now this is going to be this is going to be grid, and whenever you represent try to represent a grid, the only way out is you have to have a matrix into the picture, and hence when you do all this analysis, you are going to get a two by two matrix or two by two grid having the four elements 0, 1, 1, 2, which is easily represented by the concept of matrices, which is nothing but 0, 1, 1, and 2. And hence, the 2 by 2 image with respect to this function is given by this particular matrix. And so hence, this is going to be the image. So now, uh, when we try to do the image processing, it's going to be inverse mode. Right now, what I did is I have taken a two dimensional function and then tried to find out the image. However, when we are having an image in, in our hand or a photograph in our hand, we are standing at this particular location and we don't have the information of f of x, y. And all image processing is all about to find out different ways by which we can identify, identify this f of x, y or maybe 
not the exact one, maybe the approximate one. Because it is going to be in most problem because uh, using these four values, you have to give this particular function. So in most of the times, it is going to be in most problem, and then you are not going to get a unique answer to it. But you just try to find out uh, the uh, find out the approximate function f of x y, which is associated with a uh, with a particular. But this particular whole discussion or analysis will tell you one thing that doesn't matter how I am acquiring a particular image. If I am taking an image, whether it, it is going to be from the webcam, from the smartphone, from the camera, or any, anywhere else, what I am going to have, I am going to have a matrix. Now, so, so this particular matrix is always going to represent a, a, an, an image which you, you might have taken from any of the source. Now, what are these values? So, these values are called the pixels of them. So, this is nothing but the pixel. And hence, in the technical terms, I can say that an image is nothing but the collection of pixels. Uh, so, every image is going to be the collection of pixels and uh, this uh, number of pixels is going to define the size of your image. So, if I am saying that I am going to have an image of some C, let's say of size 200 by 100, sorry, 100 by 200, otherwise it is not going to match with the structure of this 100 by 200. The meaning is then the collection which I am going to have of these pixels or of these function values or the image function values are going to be the multiplication of these two. So, I am going to have 20,000 pixels present in that particular image. So, every image is going to be represented by a matrix and the entries of the matrix is going to have, uh, is, are going to be called the pixels uh, and this is going to be a particular values corresponding to a function that is called the image. So, this is how the image concepts comes into the picture and then using the reverse uh, engineering, we are going to find uh, this particular function for different purpose. Uh, like the, if I want to enhance my image, I should be aware of this function f of x, y, so that mathematically I can do those kind of enhancement for different kind of So I, I hope that, uh, is it clear to everyone why an image is always going to be a two dimension function and how this two dimension function will lead to uh, a matrix. So, I will take a pause of two minutes so that if you have some query so far, which whatever we have learned, you can now uh, ask uh, those queries with me. So, so that we are going to have uh, a discussion on those queries. So, Dilpiji, is there any query in the chat box? Okay. Uh, okay, so I think uh, let let me open this forum for a discuss for a for a quick discussion. If someone is going to ask uh, something uh, regarding anything whatever we have done so far, so you are most welcome. You can unmute yourself and then uh, uh, you can uh, try to talk to me, and then I will try to clarify your doubts. In case of you don't have any query, then let us uh, extend the concept of this image processing uh, further. So, anyone who want to ask something or should we proceed further? I want to note. I think Vijay Kumar is asking something. Uh, Vijay, can you please repeat your question? Sir, as in this example, we have taken X and Y as a discrete set, okay? Your voice is very low. I think you are asking that why I have chosen X as 0, 1 and Y as 0, 1? No, no, no. Am I okay. audible clearly? Uh, pardon? Am I audible? I know audible. you are audible, yes, yes. Yeah. Sir, I am asking you that you have taken X and Y as a discrete set, okay, 0, 1, 0, 1. Yes. And, and using the function f of X, Y is, is equal to X plus Y, you have got that uh, matrix 0. Hmm. Yes, I got this matrix. Yes. How, can it, how can it create a continuous picture? About the intermediate no, point. picture is not going to be continuous at all. No, when you talk I, about I, image, image is always going to be discrete. 
discrete but sir when we when we see the outputs we are having uh, all the gaps in between are filled up okay so that is uh, that is actually due to the large volume of pixels okay. so you do one experiment uh, maybe if you have a uh, photograph uh, in your smartphone just open that photograph and try to zoom in zoom yeah, at the maximum level maximum level when you try to zoom we can see the pixels yes. that is not a pixel that is a blocks so that is called yeah. the pixels at a particular location so that, and no image is going to be continuous in nature since yeah. your number of pixels are very high with respect to your screen in which you are looking at your uh, your image you feel that the image is continuous but so it makes us to feel that yeah it is continuous screen oh, okay sir okay yeah, matlab so that, that 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 number of pixels makes us to uh, feel that yeah the uh, pictures is it's continuous. A continuous yes it's a continuous okay. but no okay. picture is going to be continuous because every okay. picture is re represented by a matrix and matrix is going to be a discrete structure it is not going to be a continuous structure at all okay okay sir okay, the transformation which is going to utilize the matrix that may be continuous but matrix itself is always going to be discrete because it's a collection of different elements okay sir thank so but you. your question uh, is uh, uh, wanting me to say a uh, few things about this x and y because you have uh, uh, you have said that why i have taken this zero and one even you can take a internal no issues in that so now let me take a very simple example just to try to extend this concept why i have taken this discrete in nature uh, let me take my x as the interval zero to one let me take y as Also has zero to one. So now this is the interval. So how many elements are there in the interval? That that is my question. So the between zero to one, you are going to have the infinite numbers. You have infinite yes, numbers. Yes. So you are going to have the rational numbers, irrational numbers, everything all together. You are going to have the infinite values in this particular interval. Similarly, in this particular interval as well. But when you try to find out an image, the size is going to be the fixed. Yeah. For this example, I said that I am looking for two by two image only. I may also say that I am looking for four by four image only. So this function may are will also give me a four by four image, eight by eight image, or let's say hundred by hundred image. But what oh. I am trying to do is out of this infinite values, I need to pick certain values, uh, preferably in the equidistant equidistant manner, such that I am going to create the desired size of that particular image. Like if I say two by two, so the obvious choice for me is zero and one for x as well as for y. If I say I want to con construct a four by four image out of this particular function, the meaning is if my x is going to be zero to one, then in this particular interval I am looking for four values. And then those four values are again going to be very obvious choice for me. So you will take zero, zero point two five, point five, uh, or maybe point uh, seven five. Again, these are values. These are the different values which are going to be equidistant and lying in this particular interval. Someone may someone may start from point two five and go till one. So it's all about your perception and how you are going to choose those values. So. of course i agree when i say x cross y then this set x and y are going are maybe interval but in order to make a make an image of uh, definite size i am going to take those are sets and whenever you are going to have this kind of phenomena which is going to have a interval or the continuous set and out of this you are pulling up some value this concept is called the sampling yes sir sampling that means so you collect the data. sampling theory so yes. uh, you can even you can take this x as the continuous y as the continuous interval on the whole domain whatever domain you want to take and take and then you can uh, using uh, using some criteria you can pick up the different values and this actually comes under the category of sampling theory uh, sampling. where you have to uh, satisfy the yes. nyquist state uh, for the better yes, sampling of the points so, so what i have done sir in signal processing, processing.
Vijay, uh, can you please repeat what you are saying? That I have done in signal processing. Yeah, everything like is same. Everything is same. Signal yeah. processing is when you talk about signal. Signals are always vectors. Vectors, yes. Okay. When you try to extend from signals to image, that is going to be matrix. So it's a very simple extension of a number from to a vector and then vector to uh, matrix. So whenever you are in the vector domain, you are working with the signals, one-dimensional signals. And whenever you are in the matrix domain, you are with the image. But the underlying philosophy of the sampling is going to be same. So, but again, uh, in this lecture series, I'm not uh, actually discussing this sampling. But if uh, there are requests, then I may try to see at the end. I, I do may have a uh, full lecture on the sampling uh, as well. So now, uh, now uh, the next question which you may ask is this interval about this interval zero to L. So in this case, I am saying that my L is going to be two, but L is not going to satisfy that criteria. It may possible that for some function uh, f of x y. L cannot be in the form of 2 to the power L minus. You cannot try to reflect that. So then you have you are trying to make everything or whatever numbers you are going to get in a certain interval depending on this small L. And that process is called the quantization. Uh, so whenever you try to construct an image, it is just the application of the sampling and the quantization for different purposes. Sampling will define the grid or the size of the image quantization will decide the pixel values which you are going to have for a given function. So whenever you combine all together, you are going to get a very nice and clean image. And if the size is pretty large, then you will not even notice uh, that you are looking at a discrete entity. You will be that it's going to be a continuous entity. So whenever you try to enlarge those uh, images, then you are uh, trying to visualize that, okay, no, I am still looking for the uh, discrete images rather than the continuous Okay, so any other question from anyone? I think someone has written something in chat box. Uh, so what's the motivation that image is defined like this particular type of 2D functions? Uh, so uh, I, I think uh, Aritra Roy is asking this question. So basically, uh, uh, when, you, when you talk about uh, the images and the motivation for this is, ultimately when you try to take capture an image, you have to store somewhere. And the most of the time, the storage device is going to be a computer or a smartphone, which is again going to be a uh, very compact size of computer. Only. So whenever you talk about uh, computer, computer doesn't take the continuous things. Computer always will be the discrete things. That to basically the binary number system. But everything has to be a discrete. You cannot like in the for the simplest example, if I if you, let's say uh, like uh, in the C plus plus program or any of the programming. If I want to fit the value of pi, uh, let me take uh, here the value of pi. I know that is going to be three point one four and so on so. On. So it's going, it's going to be a recurring number again and again. So I don't have an ending over here. However, I cannot give this kind of number in the computer. I cannot fit this kind of number. So the meaning is, if I cannot fit this number, then I am looking for an approximate number. So then this whole continuous process has to be discretized at some point of time. Then I have to decide. Okay, how many decimal places I am I am going to require for a particular problem so that that desired accuracy level is going to be achieved, and that desired accuracy level will decide how many decimal points you need you, you need to take. So uh, for simplicity, I am just taking a two decimal place. The so most of the times we are going to take three point one four as the value of pi, but this is not the actual value of pi. This is the approximate value of pi. The actual value has more digits after this four. So just to fed this information into the computer, I need to discrete. I need to take a call that, okay, if I want to use this in my computer, I need to truncate it at some point of time. And that truncation will lead to a discrete process. Now, the same scenario is there for the images. If you want to take the image and store into the computer, Computer doesn't work on the computer uh, continuous things. You have to make the process discrete in nature. And a rectangular discrete arrangement is always a matrix. And that is why every image is going to be a matrix, maybe square or maybe rectangular. So this is the only motivation that if you are capturing some image, that image has to be for the storage purposes. And I need to store that. 
even if you look at if you want to take the printing of that image nowadays the printer are also working on the uh, digital uh, digital domain so again you need to take a digital image for the printing so now there is no printer which will give you the uh, printing of a continuous image. so everything has to be digitalized so uh, in that particular sense you are looking for the discrete domain only and hence you have to define your image in this particular manner uh, aritra i hope that i have uh, clarified your query yes sir yes okay so now let us uh, further uh, extend this uh, concept of images because i mentioned in the last slide that you see there is one uh, yeah. there is one question from usha she is asking about the color of the image sir yeah ma'am please hold on your questions for a second i am just trying to extend for the gray scale to the color image this is the next slide uh, for uh, today's lecture so within a second i will give the answer what is the meaning of color images so as i mentioned that uh, in this particular slide i said that whenever i am going to have the function uh, under this particular setup i am going to get a gray scale but when you try to take photographs for your mobile or for a or for the maybe the current cameras you are going to get not the gray scale image where only the black and white and the different shades from their gray shades are going to be there you are going to have the different colors you are, you are going to have the red color blue color green color magenta and all those colors are going to be there so now what we will do so that this 2d function which is going to give the gray scale image is going to give us the color image so now next is the color image so color image is a simple extension of the gray scale images what we are trying to do over here is we are in, instead of taking uh, one function f now we are going to take the three different function r g and b so this is the function with respect to the red color this is the function which is going to set the green color and this is the function which is going to contribute toward the blue color so whenever you are going to take this vector arrangement of three different function values where the first value is going to uh, towards the red color second value towards the green color and third value towards the blue color and when you take the combination of these three the appearance will look like a color image so basically it's a very simplest extension of matrices to the tensor where you are going to have the three values so in this case what i what i am going to have i am going to have one image with respect to r another image with respect to g and the third image with respect to b so now it's going to be a collection of matrices so color image is now is nothing but the mere extension of the matrix theory where you just want to take the collection of different matrices so there are different kind of models uh, which we are going to have the uh, the uh, widely used method is called the rgb model where the three function will represent the red color green color and blue color and whenever you are overlay going to overlay these three or uh, values or three these three matrices uh, on each other you are going to get a color image so this is the basic definition of color image and here r g and b are the same function and uh, built on the same philosophy which we have done which we have seen for the gray, gray scale images so color image is again going to be image function but here you are going to have the three different component so everything is now is going to be in the uh, vector form so color image is nothing but the combination of vector as well as matrix so again as i mentioned that uh, in this three colors are going to r g and b have integer values from 0 to 50 again this 255 will come when i will take small l is equal to 8 so this is the uh, widely used setup for all the images so they will take the small value of l as 8 so the capital l will come to to give power l minus 1 or to to give power 8 minus 1 when you solve it you will get the value at 255 so their dynamic range is going to be 0 to 255 so uh, most of the current devices are going to work on this particular setup of uh, uh, l is equal to 8 so they are going to represent uh, every pixel with the, with the help of the 8 bits and this has to be true for all r g and b for all the three colors colors and then when you combine these then you are going to have uh, you are going to have a color so you can look at it since we are going to have the 256 value for all 256 value for g and 256 value for b and uh, all together you are going to have this much 
color combination which you are going to have uh, in the current scenario, and these combination will lead to the color images. So, Usha, uh, have I answered your query? How the extension of the color images from the gray scale images going to happen? So, mathematically, it's nothing but the collection of matrices. And different model models are going to have the different values to consider. Okay, so let me give you a very brief idea of uh, uh, two very famous models of color images. One is the RGB model, where I am going to have uh, uh, where I am going to have the image of the same object from the perspective of red color, from the perspective of green color, and from the perspective of blue color. And whenever I overlay these. I am going to get a well-defined color images which we are going to have uh, nowadays in our head, in our smartphone, in our cameras or in our laptop. The another model which is going to be there is called the CMYK uh, model, where the color models we are going to consider is cyan, magenta, yellow and black. And whenever you try to overlay these images, you are going to get uh, the image which is called the color image. So now whatever you talk about black, so this black is nothing but the gray scale, which you are going to have uh, in the previous case. Uh, so this is nothing but these three colors along with the gray scale version of that particular object will give you a color image. Uh, so this is all about the color image. But now I think in order to get the more idea about this color, how colors and the linear algebra is going to be uh, attached with each other. So let us have a very quick discussion on uh, uh, a very quick discussion on the colors and the linear algebra. So linear algebra and colors. So now the linear algebra is also tightly associated with the colors, which you are going to see uh, around you. So let us have a very uh, quick uh, example of it. So now I am taking, I am now going to try to consider the RGB model of color. So whenever you have a RGB model, so this model, the underlying philosophy says is, this red, green, and blue are going to be my primary colors. So I will assume that the rest of the colors which are not covered by these three colors are going to be the linear combination of these three colors. So this particular uh, this particular uh, figure will give you an idea how things will move over here. So this is going to be the red block, this is going to be blue, and this is going to be in green. When you just combine the blue and red, you are going to get the magenta color. So I know that if uh, any one of you is going to be a good painter, then uh, you are going to appreciate more because you are going to have a better sense of uh, uh, forming the new colors out of the existing colors. So if you look at uh, these water colors, which uh, usually children are going to have, they are going to be the limited number of colors only. And uh, despite of that fact, they are able to cons construct all the possible colors after mixing different colors all together. So it's all about the mixing of the primary colors which we are going to have in our head. So in this RGB model, we will assume that we are going to have only three colors in our head, R, G, and B. So now you can you can always uh, try to relate this fact with the color printer. So whenever you are going to have the color printer with you, there are going to be four categories. One is black, and then you are going to have three uh, different colors. So the meaning is that printer won't work on the RGB model. It actually work on Y uh, C M K this one uh, C M Y K model where one is going to be the black cartridge and then three are going to be three different colors the cyan, magenta, and yellow. And when you try to combine these colors, you are going to have all the spectrum covered for the colors. So that is called the C M Y K model. Uh, so again, I am not going to discuss same like a model because uh, the philosophy is going to be same uh, as we are going to have in the R G model. So you can. Uh, visualize those things uh, very easily. So now whenever I try to just mix the blue and red, the color which I am going to get is magenta. Similarly, when I just uh, try to mix the blue and green, uh, I am going to get the color cyan. And whenever I try to mix uh, green and red, I am going to get uh, the color yellow. And now I'm going to try to mix the third color as well. So when red, green and blue are actually mixing, I am going to get the white. So now, here the underlying philosophy is the percentage of blue color and red color are going to be same. But it is not always a case. It may possible that out of this primary color, I may 
I may give weightage to a certain color. Like if I'm going to, in this case, the thing is 100% blue and 100% red, you will get magenta. But it's not possible that I will take only the 50% of blue and let's say 100% of red. So of course, I am not going to get a magenta. I am going to get a variant of magenta which is close to the red because the dominant color is going to be red. So now different percentages of these colors will give you the different color, different kind of colors. So this is all about the linear algebra. Right? So let me quickly uh, go ahead. Uh, so now if I, if, since I am saying this RGB model, this R, red, green and blue color are going to be uh, the primary color. So I am going to uh, represent this in a uh, three dimensional space where one X is R, G and B. And then uh, this one is nothing but the percentage. So one is representing hundred percent of this. So whenever you are uh, having these two terms as zero, you are in the pure red and so on. So whenever you are trying to have the different combination, you are going to get this particular color cube and this color cube is going to have all the combinations of all the colors. So, so let, let me, let me give you an example how the things are going to be moved. So, or how the linear algebra comes into the picture. So, any color C in that particular cube which we have seen in the previous uh, slide can be represented as a system of simultaneous equation or the system of this equation C is equal to AX. Where A is nothing but the collection of your primary colors and X is nothing but the percentage to those primary colors. So like if I'm in this case, my primary color is R, G and B. So this is the R, G and B. The column of this matrix is R, G and B. And these are the percentage associated with these particular colors. So because if, if you take the multiplication of this, you are not going to get nothing but the linear combination of these colors. So different values of this X1, X2, X3 will give you different colors altogether. So let me take a very simple example. When I take X2 and X3 as 0 and X1 is 1. So in this case, there is no contribution of blue and green color. So the output is going to be a pure red color. And then you can you can see that I am going to deviate from the red color when I, I am mixing either the blue color or the green color. Then and only then I am uh, deviating from the red color. Otherwise, I am in the uh, pure red color. So whenever these two values are zero, I am going to have uh, these two values are going to zero. I am going to have pure red color. Similarly, now I can change the value. So let me take uh, R, uh, this X1 and X3 as 0 and X2 as 1. And this is for the green color. Hence, the output is going to be the purely green color. Because I am not mixing any of the primary color with the green color. In the similar way, now let us take an example when we are going to have these two uh, component X2 and X3 as, uh, X2, uh, sorry, X2 and X3 is going to be 1 and this is going to be 0. And in this case, I know that now I am mixing the green with blue. So from this figure, I know that when we are when I mix green with blue, I am going to get a Kyan color. So I am going to get the Kyan color. So now uh, let me end today's lecture with a question. What is the uh, percentage of X1 and X2, uh, X1, X2 and X3 if I am going to get this color? So this is not the blue, this is something kind of uh, navy blue. So what the, what can be what what are the possible mm -hmm. possible percentage of, or the possible values of this x1 x2 and x3 so that i will get this particular color so can anyone get uh, give me a, give me an idea what are the values of x1 x2 and x3 anyone want to try want to take a try x1 is 0. 0.4 x2 is 0. 0.4 and x3 is 0. 0.8 a point 0.4 x3 is point 0.8 okay what about x2 point 0.4 so you are taking point 0.4 point 0.4 point 0.8 is it correct yes sir okay so why you have given point 0.8 but uh, first let because me ask this because i want variant in in, in the color of blue yes so now just try to compare this output color with the primary color. So I know that this color is close towards this particular color red. And again, if you look at very clearly, the variation is not too much. And hence, I can deduce that the percentage of blue color is going to be maximum. 
and the uh, and the percentage for these two colors are going to be minimum so minimum. this can be one of the solution uh, but this is not the exact solution which uh, i have taken so if you look at uh, my uh, observation so i have taken the 50% of red color 25% of the uh, green color and then 100% is going to be the blue color so but again uh, this uh, 40% 40% and 80% is again going to be one of the solution because again the dominant color is going to be this However, this color is uh, I have created with this particular combination. So now, uh, just comparing your output color with the primary color, you can try to or uh, you can visualize very easily that which is going to be the dominant color and which is going to be the non-dominant color in order to creation of this particular thing. And then you can try the different kind of possible values of x1 and x2 and x3 to get the final solution. So now this this uh, problem is going to be very ill post problem which you can easily understand because if i'm saying the 50 25 100 if i just uh, change this value of 50 25 or let's say 98 this combination will not going to be far different from this color so it is going to be the approximately same so the meaning is the problem when you are going to have a single output and you are going to get the percentage of three different uh, primary colors or more than uh, more than one primary colors then this particular uh, problem is always going to be the ill post problem because you are going to have the less given information you are looking for the more uh, information to be find out so it is going to be the ill post problem and which is going to be very hard to solve and hence uh, it is going to be a hidden trial kind of method you will try to take the different values of x1 x2 and x3 uh, until you are going to get the desired color which you are going to have. So now, uh, so now I will stop with, uh, today's lecture with a very, a very simple uh, uh, explanation of the cube. As I mentioned in the previous slide, that whenever you are going to take the different combination of these three primary color, you are going to have the complete spectrum of your color. So if you look at that particular, if you recall that particular cube which we have seen along with this particular figure, so it is going to be something like this. So this is going to be the cube. This is going to be the white color. This is going. This axis is going to be the red color. This axis is going to be the green color, and this axis is going to be the blue color. And then when you take the different uh, combination, you are going to have the complete spectrum of all the color of, the, of all the colors. So the sides which are not visible in this figure are given uh, below this particular cube. So now you can look at ranging from black to white, blue to pink red to yellow, green to yellow, every, every color which you can think of, you can now try to, uh, you can you can have access to those colors. The only thing which you, need, which you need to understand is, what are the percentage I am going to take for these three different colors to actually form that particular desired color or to form this particular aspect. So these colors are, are nothing but the linear combination of the basis color, the primary color, which you can understand, which you can assume in a certain model. Like in RGB model, R, G, and B are the primary color. Now you can have the CMYK, where you can have the cyan, magenta, yellow, and the black is going to be primary color. So in any of the case, any of the model, you just try to take the linear combination of the different colors which you are going to have to produce all the colors. And whenever you try to overlay these things in form of a tensor, then you are going to have the color images into the tensor states. So uh, I think the time is over for today's lecture. So I will stop here uh, for today's lecture. In the next class, we will try to see uh, the, uh, the two very famous factorization technique of linear algebra, which I have the widely, uh, widely used in the image processing and other. Uh, areas such as the data, data science, artificial intelligence, and machine learning. And those are the singular value decomposition and the principal component analysis. And then we will try to have a discussion how uh, this SVD comes into the picture, what are the benefits and all those things we will see in the uh, next lecture. So again, uh, now I'm putting the floor for the questionnaire. Uh, if you are having some queries, some issues, you can uh, now discuss it with them so that uh, we are going to I will try to uh, uh, clarify your doubts. So I will now stop sharing my screen. So now we are going to have a uh, discussion on that particular thing. Okay, so so I have uh, queries from your side.
sir please suggest uh, first course book in this image processing with mathematical approach uh, so, so there is a very famous book by uh, uh, anil k j uh, so you you can search uh, that, that particular book I, I i somehow forget the name of that book but you can search the digital image processing by the anil k j you will find that book so that book is a very fundamental book in the image processing and then uh, you will have the mathematical flavor to it but uh, you, again uh, you try to use that book when you are going to have a better understanding very good understanding of linear algebra otherwise you may uh, miss out in between if you want a very basic book uh, of the image processing then there is a book by digital image processing by gatjolmis and books so just take either the first edition of it or the sixth edition of it so the first edition and the sixth edition of this book is uh, completely full of mathematics but the intermediate versions are actually uh, lacking in the mathematic point of view of the image process so any book you can follow so the this gonzales and wood book is going to be very basic it is written in a very basic um, uh, very very basic english and everything so everything is as you can appreciate that book but uh, if you are very strong in linear algebra then i will suggest you to go with the akj Ah uh, yes, this is the one. Uh, this fundamentals of digital digital image processing by Anil Kumar Jain. So you can uh, consult with these books. So any other any further queries? So there is the idea is there are no further queries. So maybe we can uh, all of today's lectures. Then we will yeah, tomorrow. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Doctor Bhatnagar, for this lecture. And uh, before I end this session, I have couple of announcements. So the first is I have sent feedback form for this program to all of you. So I request all of you to fill that form by Sunday, that is December thirteenth. Uh, i will also share one more form for feedback on instructors and tutors maybe tomorrow uh, you have to it's compulsory to fill both the forms as per rules of cm the second announcement is the second lecture of this series will be taken tomorrow at 5:30 pm by dr garu patna okay okay so that's thank it you, thank you sir thank you very much okay Is meeting now? Yes. Okay. Thank, so, thank you, everyone. I am happy. Uh, good night to all of. Okay. Bye. Bye. Tomorrow. Yeah. So please fill those.